Hello everyone, my name is Skalti, and today we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at the water tower mechanic in Satisfactory and hopefully clear up a couple of questions from an earlier video on the channel. I hope you enjoy. Alright, so what we have in front of us is a simple water tower setup with a couple different configurations to demonstrate some of the ins and outs of how a water tower would function in Satisfactory. The hope of this video is to answer a couple of questions based on the coal generator video that I've uploaded previously. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it and try and clear some of those things up. Over on the left, we have a water extractor and this is overclocked to provide 300 water per minute. And it's breaking off into two different pipe segments. One of those is being fed into a vertical pipe that has two pumps in order to elevate the fluid into this fluid buffer here. And this fluid buffer essentially is functioning as our water tower. The fluid buffer is not inherently necessary. This is just for demonstrational purposes to show that the fluid buffer or some kind of item that would receive water is actually receiving it. So if we look inside, we can see that the fluid buffer is beginning to fill and the drain rate will eventually start as well, unless these pipes are already full, which it looks like they are. But this pipe here is essentially highlighted red to demonstrate that this is our key pipe and makes this a little easier to follow and understand. But essentially this key pipe is the key to telling other pipes connected to it that any fluid going through those pipes can go up to this elevation and this elevation is specifically this elevation, this height right here. This is the maximum or at least based on the pump here, any pipes connected to this key pipe will be able to rise to essentially fill something like a fluid buffer or a coal generator, etc., without the use of pumps. Now to kind of go over some of the specifics on how this works, if we look at this pipe that's breaking off before the fluid hits the pumps here and goes up into that fluid buffer, if we follow this, we'll look and see that this pipe here, again without pumps, is not actually full, it is maxed out. Reason being, it's not connected to the key pipe. And this is the key pipe versus this pipe back here, simply because a pump turns a pipe into a one-way system. Any fluid that goes through a pump cannot go back down and feed into this pipe, for example. So as a result, this pipe is being told that I cannot actually take any more water and elevate it unless I have a pump. So if I go ahead and take a pipe and connect it to the key pipe, this fluid can now essentially travel forward and backward in this network. And so as a result, we will now see the flow rate drastically increase. And eventually this fluid buffer is going, is going to fill. And this will be able to fully max out as a result of the fact that this key pipe is now connected. So essentially this can, this fluid buffer, you know, again, would be a coal generator um, or a refinery, for example. And again, without the use of a pump. Another concern to clear up is that if the key pipe is a Mark I or a Mark II, whatever it may be, does that mean that the fluid that can be lifted or elevated in the network, is that limited based on the maximum flow rate of the key pipe? So in this example, the max flow rate of the key pipe is 300. Does that mean that only 300 cubic meters of fluid can be lifted throughout the entire network? The answer is no, this is not the case. The key pipe simply tells all of the other pipes that are connected to it that fluid can be lifted to that amount. If you are lacking flow rate, that likely means that you need to provide an additional source of flow. So that's what this example over here is for. We have an additional water extractor overclocked to provide 300 water per minute. And you can see that we have two towers here, each with their own pipe with a maximum flow rate of 300. If there were pumps on both of these pipes, these vertical pipes, essentially the flow rate would be 150, give or take, per pipe. So because we have this water extractor here and this water extractor here that is supplying, 
supplying the key pipe. When I connect this, as a result, we now have two sources providing fluid into the network. And those two sources are providing a total of 600 fluid per minute. So now that it is connected to the key pipe, we are going to see the flow rate increase. And both of these pipes will eventually cap out at 300 flow per minute. So this is just to demonstrate that the key pipe has no bearing on maximum flow rate of any of the other pipes in the network that are not using pumps. So both of those have now maxed out at 300 and we will begin to see these fluid buffers fill with water. An additional question that I also received consistently was how did I set up the water tower specifically in that coal generator guide to essentially connect to the other three pipes that were feeding the coal generators. So let's go ahead and take a look. So looking at the coal generator setup that I have here, if we go ahead and loop back around to the back side of here, you'll see that I have now replaced this with a glass to demonstrate the interior working components of how this all works. So in that video, I went on to explain that this bottom pipe here was essentially going to feed in and become the key pipe. So this pipe, if we keep track, lower right, comes in and goes into a pump and then another pump and that brings the fluid all the way up into this fluid buffer here and this matches the same elevation as our coal generators. The output from that, so this essentially is the true key pipe. So this fluid, this water comes down and in order to connect it to all the other pipes, I use a splitter and so if we follow this pipe here, this goes down and becomes the upper right pipe. The one on the back end, following this straight down, becomes the upper left. And then the one coming straight down out of the cross joint is becoming the bottom left. Based on how the pumps work, this pipe is essentially not a key pipe because the pumps do not allow water to flow backward. So that's what the joiner right here solves. So essentially all three of these pipes becoming or being connected to the key pipe means that any pipe connected to it via this singular pipe segment here now enables this fourth pipe to then have the same mechanics of the other ones in that the water tower is communicating that any pipes or these four pipes here can then be elevated to match that same elevation. So if we look into where the pipes are actually going up into the coal generators, you will see that there are no pumps connected. And if we go up and inside, they just simply split off and go to the coal generators on each respective side and supply them with enough water. So that is essentially how the water tower here functions. And then also any different design that I made for my coal generators during my live stream on Twitch. The other option that you can do is essentially having these pipes connect like this. This essentially takes these two pipes that are already joined together based on this pipe here. Joining these two pairs of pipes via this pipe here essentially brings all of these onto the same network as well. If you wanted to not use an entire water tower that's standalone like this, an alternative option would be to put pumps on one of these four pipes inside of this tower here that would be going up to your coal generators. And that is specifically to this example that I'm talking about. So if only one of these pipes had two pumps on it and was able to bring the water up to the elevation needed. So say this became the key pipe here this key pipe now connects to another pipe here, so that's two pipes connected. This pipe brings it over to this third pipe network here, and then this pipe connects it to the fourth pipe in the network, which means that all four pipes are then connected to the key pipe in some fashion, and all four can essentially have fluid go up to that height with the use of only two pumps. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching.
Thank you once again for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And I'm also happy to announce every Thursday starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, I will be streaming over on Twitch where you can find me playing through the game normally, popping into creative mode, designing new factories as you'll see here in guide format. And it's an opportunity to just kick back, relax, talk about the game, and hopefully have some fun. So I hope to see you guys there. Take care.